Lord's fear. Your glory, Lord, is what I last long for to be overcome by you. Presence, Lord, you presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you welcome here, come, blood in this place and feel the atmosphere. God is what I heart's long for to be overcome by you, presence, Lord. Amen. I summarize and give you praise. It only makes sense when we sing along On the oceans and the waves we give you brains It only makes sense when we sing along Oh, we always give you brains Cause all that the living gonna rise and shine we always give you praise Cause all of the living can praise your name The sun will rise and give you praise It only makes sense when we sing along The oceans and the waves will give you praise it only flows well when we sing along. Oh, we always give you praise. Cause you'll let the living can praise your name. Amen. Father, we just say thank you. Thank you for a beautiful night. Thank you for a beautiful Friday night. We can be in the presence of God again. Hey, Rihanna, thank you for the likes. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the support. Thanks for joining in. Thank you, Owen. God bless you. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday night. Welcome to a beautiful hour of Shiloh. So Shiloh is a time where we meet we God as he appears and his presence is made manifest here. So 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 21, it says, And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. This is a place where we are going to see the revelation of God through his word. And it's, he's going to be made manifest tonight. And we would. Oh, welcome back. Good to see you, Owen. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate the support. Thank you for coming back. I'm, I'm glad I made some time to answer your questions that night. That was a beautiful time. I can't forget it. I can't forget it. Thank you for reminding me. I appreciate it. So tonight, like again, like I said, you know, the, we as we go on, as we, you know, identify what God is doing in this move of God through this um, daily, nightly service. So First Samuel 3 verse 21 says, And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. God is going to reveal himself tonight, and we're going to play some worship, and we're going to um, sing some worship, read some scriptures, and get to know God better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And after the three worship songs, if you are interested in a poll, I have decided to turn the polls back to the audience. So if you're interested in a poll, let me know what you want us to do a poll on. For instance, do you prefer to ride a bike or run a marathon? Something like that. You know, a poll like that. Something like that. So if you're interested in a poll, after the song, if someone has a suggestion, I would, I would take it and I'll make it a poll. Okay? So right now, we're going to sing Good, Good Father. Hope you guys are having a good Friday night. God bless you guys. Thanks for joining in tonight. This is... I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're alive. I've heard the tender whisper of love. 
dead at night as you kill me And that you please in and am never alone You're a good, good father That's who you are That's who you are That's who you are And I'm love at you That's who I am That's who I am That's who I am Man is searching for answers Far and wide, but I know We're all searching for answers Only you provide Because you know Just what we need before we say a word You're a good, good father That's who you are That's who you are who you are, and I'm loved by you. That's who I am. 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 Arabaka shikere, arabaka sakare, arabaka. You're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of you ways You are perfect in all of you ways To us You are perfect in all of you ways You are perfect in all of you ways You are perfect in all of you ways To us Love so undeniable I, I, I can hardly speak peace So unexplainable I, I, can hardly think as you call me And deeper still as you call me And deeper still as you call me And deeper still into love Love. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And we're loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. Father, we just say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for a beautiful night of worship. Just dwelling in your presence, soaking in your love. Knowing you're a father who loves us. That you're a good father. You love us more than ever before. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for showing us compassion, love, and kindness. Thank you for showing us grace. Thank you for improving our lives and making us whole. Lord, we worship you, we magnify you, we say thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, guys. Uh, hey, Cheryl Tarzan. Haven't seen you guys in a while. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> I know I've been doing the lives usually when I'm on a conference on the road like that. I do it at very, very odd times. But thank you guys for coming. I appreciate the support um, tonight. So the title of our, of every, <laughs> good to see you. Yes, good to see you guys. Hi, Brother Tarzan. Good to see you too. Thank you, Sister Cheryl. So um, the title of our, if you, if you joined, you notice I said Shiloh. It's like Shiloh hour, Shiloh time. Shiloh means like it's a place where God reveals himself. He reveals Thank you, Tarzan. Thank you so much. Thank you for the prayers. And yes, I'm glad we're home safe and sound. Texas was on fire. We had a great time. So um, what we call this time we meet, we just call it, we call it the Shiloh Hour. I'm hoping I can make a sign and just put it back here and call it like a Shiloh Hour. So the text is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 21. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. 
For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So this is a place. Hey, Vincent, good to see you. Long time no see. So this is a place where we meet God and we experience him as he reveals himself through worship, through the word of God, as we, you know, get to know him and experience him. So that's why it is called, that's why it's called Shiloh, you know. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get a good hang of this microphone. I went, I was trying to go to the streets and preach the gospel, so I ended up moving this thing, so I have to change the settings, and so if you know if there's any difference, just let me know so I can fix it. We're going to now, we're going to take our next song, our next hymn. Good to see you, Vincent. Hope you're having a great summer. Oh, and lastly, too, I would no longer be suggesting the, what's it called? The polls, if you are interested in a poll and you want us to do a poll, at the end of the third song, you can tell us what you want to do a poll on. Like, let's say, for instance, you like to um, swim rather than run. Like, if you want us to do a vote on running or swimming, we'll do a vote on that. So it's a poll. It's a nice thing we do every time here. But I'm going to leave it to you guys. So if you want to do a poll at the end of the third song, let me know. And if you don't, it is perfectly fine. So this next song is Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. This is like one of my favorite hymns because it is fun to sing it. Also, the hymn carries a lot of weight too as well. So that's really good. So it says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. Yeah, the things of earth will grow strangely dim in light of his glory and grace. So he say, Oh, so are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's a light for a look at the Savior. A light of burden and free. So he said, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full on us, wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. A light of his glory and grace. Through death into life everlasting He passed and we follow him there Over us sin had no dominion For more than conquerors we are So we say, turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in his wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim a light of his glory and grace. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you, Cheryl. His word shall not fill you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying. Perfect salvation to tell. So turn your eyes upon. Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim, a light of his glory and grace, a light of his glory and grace. Lord, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, we give you all the adoration. Thank you for a beautiful season. Thank you for a time in your presence. As we just go in your presence, oh Lord, help us to keep our eyes turned on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, our last song of the night is Even So Come. I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you can hear baby crying. He is crying. He's back in Wisconsin. I guess he misses the nice warm weather in Texas. A warmer weather because it's also warm here as well too. Yeah. 
even so come. All of creation, all of the earth, make straight a highway, a path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Go back to sinner, wake up the saints, let let every nation shout you fame. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom. We'll be your church ready for you. Every heart longing for a king. We sing, even so come. Lord Jesus, come. Even so come, Lord Jesus, come. And we say, there will be justice, all will be new. Your name forever, faithful and true. Jesus is come, men soon. Like a bride. Waiting for her groom We'll be a church Ready for you Every heart Longing for a king We sing Even so come Lord Jesus Come Even so come Lord Jesus Come So we say so we wait, we wait for you. Oh God, we wait, you come in soon. So we wait, we wait for you. God, we wait, you come in soon. So we wait, we wait for you, Lord Jesus. So we wait, you come in soon. Hey, Lily, good to see you out here. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be your church, ready for you every heart, longing for a game. We sing, even so come, Lord Jesus, come, even so come, Lord Jesus, come, even so come, Lord Jesus, come, amen, Lord, we say thank you. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Father Lord, we just say you big thank you. Nah. Thank you for your presence made manifest in us, O oh Lord. Now we spend our lives just waiting for your coming. Now you change us, you make us whole, you save us, you renew us, you purify us. Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, O oh God. Now we'll be a church ready for you, just waiting, just waiting, O oh Lord, for your coming. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, oh, amen, oh, amen. Oh, First Samuel chapter 3 verse 21, it says, you know, And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So welcome to our beautiful Shiloh hour, where we see God reveal himself through worship, through prayer, and through the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you for the likes. Hey, Lily, long time no see. Good to see you out here tonight. 
Thank you to every single person. Thank you, Ray. Thank you guys for the support. 4,000 likes. Amazing, guys. Amazing. So we are going through Psalm chapter 42. We are actually going to finish Psalm chapter 42. So we're finishing Psalm chapter 42. God is good. So one thing we do here is we read the book of Psalms. Um, so through Psalms 42, we're learning, to, like, we got to be patient with God and see his power and see his grace and see him deliver us. So whatever you're going through and it feels like, you know, your heart is breaking and you don't think God is going to come through. Guess what? He will come through. He will save you. Thank you, Lily. Thank you for the likes. So verse we read Psalm 42 verse 1, then we read the rest and just finish up. Psalm 42 verse 1 says, As the day longs for the word, as the day longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. And I, one thing I, I ask us to do is reflect on Psalm chapter 42 verse 1 and 2. Verse 2 says, I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go and stand before him? So, like, when have we ever gotten to a place in our lives where we're just so passionate about God, we just can't get enough, we just want more, and we long for more and more and more. So we as Christians should check our lives and ask ourselves, am I at a spot where, man, I just want some quiet time in the presence of God. I just want to read my Bible again. I want to pray. Oh, one of the things I suggested was audio Bible. They said the Bible was written to be heard and not just to be read. You know, you can play some audio Bible while you have the physical Bible and just play it and read it and see how it goes. Hey, Cheryl, you say you're going to try it. How did it go? I hope you liked it. And um, thank you guys for, for those of you guys who were able to check out the um, the conference I went to. That's really good. It's still on YouTube. You can go look it up. It's called Koinonia, uh, Koinonia Global. It's really powerful. You'll love it. So going back to Psalm 42, verse um, seven it says, I hear tumult of the raging seas as your waves and surging tides sweep over me. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me. And through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. You know, <laughs> you should try it out this weekend, Cheryl. It is a beautiful experience. Just take out time, relax, go through. I think for audio Bibles, we the best part about audio Bible is the parts you struggle to understand, it kind of comes to life. Like Ezekiel, Jeremiah, the book of Revelations. Sometimes those are kind of hard. Hey, thank, hey Susie, thank you for following. Appreciate it. Thank you for the follow, Susie. So like, um, those are like complex parts to enjoy. You, I don't know, it's rare for someone to say, oh, I love reading the book of Jeremiah. You know, it's kind of rare to enjoy the book of Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Which other ones are there that... Hosea, like all those Malachi, all those ones where it just seems like there's a talk going on, but I just can't feel to grasp it and really understand what's going on, except you're like a Bible scholar. So those are the ones you can really enjoy an audio Bible because it just brings it to life. Like it is going through your mind and your soul and you're hearing it more. So going back to this, mm -hmm. Psalm chapter 42, verse 7, and the book of Psalms is also an awesome book of the Bible. You can play audio Bible too. It's really great. It brings your Bible study to life. And there are a lot of audio Bible chapters on YouTube. You just type Jeremiah 22 and you see audio Bible there on YouTube. You can just play on the Bible app. Sorry, I went down um, a rabbit trail there. So Psalm 42 verse 7 is saying like God's mercy is just, you just experience the mercy and the love of God. It says, I hear the tumult of the raging seas as you always surging and tides sweep over me. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love for me. One thing we are learning here as we grow, as we press into God more is we are learning that God loves us. Like one of the things you learn is that the fruits of the spirit is love. You know, fruits of the spirit is love. It means a fruit is a result of growth. Like if you plant something, you see the fruit, a result of it. So when we spend more time with God, we realize that God loves us. God loves his children. God loves his family. God loves God loves us. So we as his children need to know that he loves us. So first it says, but each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me. God has forgiven you your sins. Do you know that? Do you know that God God's love is so amazing. He forgives you sins. He redeems. That God's love is so powerful that he gave you a name, and that name is Jesus. And he says you should use the name of Jesus to bind the devil, to rebuke sin, to rebuke evil, to rebuke demonic attacks, to rebuke sickness. You know, that's one of the things 
tonight we're going to be praying against some certain sicknesses so that's that's how much god's love is he loves us so passionately so lovingly so unconditionally that you sh that's the best way to experience love the love of god you know it's a powerful experience and we need to grow daily in it because we can't know the totality of who god is we can't he's it's a mystery it's a big mystery but we can keep learning every day as we read through the word so psalm chapter 42 verse 8 it says towards the end says and through each night i sing his songs praying to god who gives me life one of the things oh i love this i love the two end that uh, it says through each night i sing his songs and praying to god who gives me life so one thing i encourage is here as christians is as you grow in faith as you love god more as you because you see god is so vast it's so powerful um he gave us a look just some little steps and how to approach his presence because it's so big it's so mighty like today i just fell in love again with the i love the water but today i just fell in love again with it i'm excited this summer i haven't had the time because of the baby and all this stuff going on to take my boat on the water but the water is so big it's so vast like compared to what biggest ship or cargo ship or a uh, yacht those things are really small compared to how big the water is. But how do we approach the water? We just approach it simply by going on a boat and or by going on a yacht, by going on a cruise ship and just checking it out. And that's how we can experience the water as big and vast. Like the water is so big. We've only explored is it 7% of it. Very, a very small percent. Is it, I can't remember the percentage. It's very small. Um, it's the same way with God. God is so big, He's so vast, there's so much to God, and it starts with the name of Jesus. We accept Jesus in our hearts. But also, I always say four things every Christian should do. Worship, pray. Every Christian should always have a Christian playlist. Worship, pray, read the Bible, and meditate on Scripture. Those four things you should do. So, this verse encapsulates the first two things I talk about. So I'm talking about Psalm chapter 42, verse 8, let's say part B. It says, through each night, as he's experiencing the unfailing love of God. It says, thank you, Amani. Thank you for the likes. Through each night, I sing his songs. So we should always worship in the presence of God. God is a mystery. So understand God is, it's intense. You can't understand the totality of God at once. And you can't understand everything at once. But through each night, he says he sings his songs. And the other part says, praying to God who gives me life. So I always say this. Those the regulars always know this. They always hear me say, um, and Tarzan, we call it the big four. You know, worship, pray, read the scripture, and meditate. So right here is telling us. He sings his songs and he prays to God who gives him life. And this is what he says. Oh God, my rock, I cry. Why have you forgotten me? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? One thing I want to encourage you as a Christian is sometimes we can feel discouraged. Yeah, TBF, exactly, TBF. I think we should put TBF and give it a verse, like Psalm 42, verse 8b. You know, through the night I sing his songs and praying to God who gives me life. So, but this person is going through some hard times and he has excuse me he's going through some hard times and he's seeking god and he, he just wants to god to answer him and says oh god my rock i cry why have you forgotten me why must i wander around in my grief oppressed by my enemies oh lord you know he's crying to god so i just want to encourage you as a christian is this make sure make sure you cry to god about every single thing that bothers you he will deliver you he will save you he will make you whole verse 10 says their taunts break my bones their scoff where is this god of yours so they're asking him where's your god where's where, where this god you keep talking about where's this god that you think that saves that does miracles that delivers where is this god where should you start reading your bible monty's asking where should i start reading my bible i am so to know the story of salvation i'll say start from the book of john Start from the book of John, understand who Jesus is, understand the like you have access to the most powerful, not to the most, to the only powerful name in the world. And in, in, in this realm, in this physical realm and the spiritual realm, the only powerful name you have access to is Jesus. And to know him better, start from the book of John, read Romans, read Acts, the book of Acts, and pray and worship. 
praying and worship brings the presence of God down. Reading the Bible makes you experience that presence of God. But praying and worship brings it down. You know, the Bible brings it to life. But the Bible sometimes is so boring. Not sometimes. It is so boring to a lot of people. They don't understand what's going on. But when you make time to calm yourself down and read the word, it opens spiritual realities and makes you look like, wow, this God loves me and he's amazing. Um. So the verse, the last verse is, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior, my God. He says, you know, your times will go through depression and hard times. But guess what? You can put your hope and your faith in God and he will save you. Praise him and give him all the praise. You know, just worship him. So we're going to pray this out and go to the next part of our Shiloh season. A shallow moment. And we're just going to pray, dear Lord, in this season, oh Lord. Help us know we are loved and help us seek you with all our hearts. Oh, it says, but each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me. God is pouring his love upon us all the days of our lives. The most important thing is we experience it. We know it. We feel it. We enjoy it. And we say, no, all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, if I still am found, lives the night and night. I couldn't earn it, we don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. And all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Amen. Rabaka shikiri alaba. Lord, Psalm 42, verse 8, it says, And Lord, each day the Lord pours His unfailing love upon me. Lord, and open our eyes and our heart to realize you bore your unfailing love, unfailing love upon us. Yes, Lord. Help us realize. For those of you who, who can't remember what I say, worship God. Worship and prayer brings the presence of God. Reading the word makes you experience the presence of God. So we have worshipped, you know, we have worshipped. We have prayed in the first, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. And we said, um, what did we say? One of the songs was, you're a good, good father. And we have read, we have sang that. Now we're experiencing that. In Psalm 42, verse 8, he says, and each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon us. Amen. I'm glad you love that song. God bless you, Tarzan. We're just going to sing it one more time over us, that we know this powerful love of God. You see, when you know the powerful love of God, you will not be afraid. You won't be depressed. You won't, you see, when you know the powerful love of God, instead of you being depressed and um, down and sad and sick, guess what you'd be doing? You would have so much faith and hope and joy in God. And you also will be angry at the attacks of the enemy. And you will scream and shout. And you tell the devil, I rebuke every spirit of fear. I rebuke every anxiety. I rebuke every disease. Look, let me tell you something. When you know God and you know what he has done for you, you did nothing. We did nothing to earn access to God. We did nothing to earn this power, this access to the name that can destroy death, hell, and the grave. That can destroy sickness and break barriers and deliver us. We did nothing. And when you know that it is your possession, it is your right, it is your, it is your inheritance in Christ Jesus. Because we are joint, we are co heirs with God. You know, I mean, I say with God, with Jesus, we are co heirs. Once you know that. We are sitting in heavenly places and you're enjoying this beautiful inheritance in Christ Jesus. You would almost have an anger in you, a holy anger. And you look at situations and rebuke them and renounce them and say never again. Let me tell you the testimony. I'm going to say this. I'm sorry. I'm just so carried away with the worship in this verse. There was this one time I was attacked by bed bugs. It was crazy. It cost me to, I was renting a little room. I found on Craigslist. 
I got kicked out of there. I ended up having my own apartment. God is so good. A beautiful two bedroom apartment I loved. But his bed bugs would not go away. I did everything. I sprayed the house. I did everything. And I listened to a, a man of God. His name is Benson Ida Hosa. You can look him up on YouTube. He's passed away. But he would create a holy anger in you. Benson Ida Hosa. Um, it's Benson. Then Ida Hosa is I D A. Um, H-O-S-A I looked him up I listened to some of his sermons and I was so angry and I looked at my bed and I said enough and I screamed at the bed box and I said enough I'm done with you get out and it was done I never had bed bugs anymore sometimes they always say until you're angry in your spirit some situations will never change because the devil knows that you're not angry yet so when you know that you did nothing to earn it and you have so much access, you would treat your Christian life differently. Yes, there are times for us to be patient. There are times for us that we got to pray and wait on God. But my goodness, there are times you just got to scream at that situation and tell it, get out, get out, enough. Amen, exactly, sure. And I'm going to sing this song again. I'm going to pray for us and we'll go to the second session. And as I, as I sing this song again, I just want you to know that God loves you. Your sins are forgiven. You are not your past. And it says, And all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, all oh, it chases me down, fast till I'm found, this earth night and night. I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Ever ending Reckless love of God Oh Father God I speak life into us, oh God Mashikiriyada ba 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 I speak live that whatever demonic thing is holding us back from experiencing the full power of the love of God, we break and destroy in Jesus' name. We speak life over us, over our family, over our children, over our home, over our life, over our bodies, over our blood, over our bones, over our hormones. We speak the life of Jesus that we experience this unfailing love of God that pours in us on every single day. We experience this love of God in Jesus' name. Hey, yes. And the fresh fire of God is made manifest that we experience your God. That we experience the God that saves in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just pray that we are children that sing your songs every night. That we sing your song every night. Like we do here, oh Lord. I pray, oh Lord, that we pray to you every single day of our lives. That we pray, oh Lord. We give you all the praise. When things go wrong, we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I just want to pray healing for anybody that is going through anything. I want you to know this. God loves you. And scripture says, perfect love casts out fear. Knowing to know God is here tonight. Oh yes, oh yes. Whatever you're going through, whatever it is, as you're done with this life, you know, just go lay hands on somebody that is going through something and just pray over them and say, it's finished, it is done. Now the love of God has, you know, it has finished. Jesus says it is finished. By the stripes of Jesus, we're healed. Jesus didn't tell us to to walk around the mountain seven times or drink a cup of water 10 times or you know do certain things 20 times for us to experience that healing all they said it is finished and we begin to experience it as you read the word as you grow in faith you begin to experience healing breakthrough progress let me tell you something let me tell you something funny um the holy spirit woke me up today it was before he said, before 6 a.m. this morning, he said, pray, pray in tongues, just pray, just pray, pray, pray. Make sure you wake up and pray. I was so tired. We slept at 2 a.m. And um, the Lord told me, he said, wake up, wake up before 
it was he told me to wake up just i was supposed to do it before i slept but i was so tired i slept we said wake up pray 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 and i was praying and while i was sleeping i heard a noise like a like uh, something was like almost like a the blade like a propeller like the blades of a plane or something just blowing it was kind of weird i don't know if it was outside if i was dreaming or whatnot and the lord told me wake up pray wake up and pray so i prayed i was just you know i prayed i made god said do it for at least 10 minutes i prayed and i soaked in the presence of god 10 minutes only for me to find out only for me to find out this check this out all the planes all the airlines around the u.s and europe were disturbed by um by the outage you can look it up on tiktok just type um um, outage i think microsoft outage you can some people are affected by it out, microsoft outage a lot of people were affected by it so the holy spirit told me pray and the next thing when i was done praying i was you know in and out of sleep i was like trying to catch a nap before we got on our plane out here there was a lady that we um there was a lady that we um you know that me, me her and my wife hey thank you for the follow we um shared the ubers together going to the conference back and forth this lady texted me around six in the morning she said hey i need you hey she said check your airline something is wrong everybody's airlines are being canceled she sent me a screenshot that she could not log in to her own um she could not log into her own um airline to check in and all of that and she told me check yours check yours and i checked mine and everything was fine and we got to the um to the to the airport to the gate we only had one hour added a lot of people had their flights canceled a lot of things were messed up so what am i saying here the name of jesus is powerful you have your responsibility to pray that's what i think we should just go and read psalm 42 verse 1 and 2 and verse 8 it says and praying to god who gives me life when we pray to god he gives us life i prayed and the lord i refused to discuss the outage with my wife you know, I refuse to say, look at my wife and talk about it because I did not want the outage to come to life. You know, once you begin to talk about something wrong, sometimes it kind of gives you a consciousness of it. So I didn't want to talk. I just wanted us to have faith. We go to the airport and we check in. So we checked in and we flew back safe and sound. Just an hour extra. That's all. But some people's flights had to be canceled, rescheduled and all of that. So what am I saying here? There's power in the name of Jesus. Once you love him and you soak in his presence, my God, you experience so much power and love. And that's what I was saying. There is power in the name of Jesus. And there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. I pray you experience healing, breakthrough, provision, and a mighty hand of God in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. I spent a lot of time talking on that. <sighs> Are we going to have time to do this leadership? We haven't done leadership in a good minute. All right. And it's almost 10 p.m. I want to respect people's time. All right, all right, all right. So this is... um. Uh, I was going to say one thing, like once you experience the power of God, um, there are times we tie our experiences and the progress we want to expect in God to conferences, ministers of God, and things like that. There is nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong going to a certain place and receiving growth, healing, and progress. There's nothing wrong with that. But the most progress you're going to experience in your Christian faith are the place are going to be experienced in the place of prayer in those alone times with god you are going to destroy lost you're going to destroy depression sleeplessness insomnia you're going to destroy a whole lot of stuff in the place of prayer when you make time for god so we encourage you as a christian make that personal time with god amen that's that let's let's do some leadership i'm sure people like tarzan and cheryl miss leadership i haven't done it in a while so um let's talk about it so every night we talk about psalm and matthew chapter 5 is 16 so matthew 5 16 says let your light shine before man that he would um 
That we would let your light shine before men. That men, people would see your good works and they would glorify your Father who is in heaven. So God has called us to be leaders, to be great examples as Christians. God has called us to be great examples. And so in being great examples, there are different segments and different topics we talk about. So this topic is called Faithful Till the End as a leader faithful to the end as a christian so we should be faithful to the very end so i just want to encourage us as christians to be faithful to the very end um that's revelations chapter 3 verse 10 it says because thou hast kept the word of my patience i will also keep thee from the hour of temptation i'm sorry if it's lagging i am so sorry about that i also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth you know jesus was talking to a group of people and says huh guess what because you have been faithful i will protect you i will keep you i will keep you from you know the evil the evil times are supposed to come upon the earth from our temptation so this is revelation you know after there's going to be a time in our christian faith in this world that we live in that jesus is going to come and judge the world and judge people and you know and and People are going to be judged. But he says to a certain people, he says, But thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Jesus will protect us. He will keep us. But in general, reflecting on this according to the end time and according to our lives in general, once we keep God's word, he will protect us. You know, as we read in Psalm 42, he says, I pray to God who gives me life. The more we pray to him, he gives us life. We are alive. In the presence of God, you cannot spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes in the presence of God. This is summertime. A lot of people are going to retreats, camp programs, conferences, and all of that. Um, like I just went to a conference, felt more alive. The more you go there, spend two days, three days, five days a week, there is something Thing in you that changes your joy in you increases like you feel more hopeful more joyful you know i shared an example here that i'm so excited when i come out from the presence of god i want to hug my wife and my children because i just i say my children yes my children in jesus name and um because when i'm in the presence of god the joy in my body increases the joy in my soul increases so that's what i want to encourage you as a christian if you're struggling with depression and anxiety and fear you need to spend more time in the presence of god you need to listen to more sermons. You need to make a retreat. Just be like on Saturday mornings. I'm not going to do anything till 12 p.m. Or actually, sometimes we don't do anything. We just sleep in bed. So to 11 a.m., I'm just going to play worship. I'm going to listen to a sermon. I'm going to pray. I'm going to play audio Bible and things like that. And that way, you're just increasing the joy. You're pressing in. So that's what we do as Christians is you see the more we stay in his presence the more he will keep us from danger so that's revelation 3 verse 10 jesus is coming jesus will come soon you know jesus will either come or we're going to meet him in matthew 10 verse 7 and it says as ye go preach saying the kingdom of god is at hand so my own call to you tonight as if you as you guys already know we have titled our services every night we do this every night if you're new here hit that follow button thank you for the like stars and hit that follow button and join us every night um it's called the shiloh the shiloh the shiloh uh meet meeting you know where we see god revealed and i'm gonna tell you the kingdom of god is at hand and we sang a song it says even so come you're Lord Jesus, come. So the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is coming soon. Things are changing. Things are lining up. One of the ways you know Jesus is coming soon, as much as people say there's wickedness and all of that, you know, we said, they said the gospel of the word of, the word of God will be preached to the four corners of the earth, to the four corners of the earth. The gospel of the word of God will be reached. And so if you notice, time is time. The gospel, 20 years ago, it was hard to preach the gospel. 50 years ago, 100 years ago, it was harder to go to certain places. Now, look at us. 2,000 years later, it's easier to go to certain parts. It's easier to go to China. It's easier to go to Asia, to Russia. It's easier to go to um, Africa. Certain places you would have gone to 50, 60, 70 years ago, they would just kill them right away. There's still some places that are hard to reach, but it's getting better because Jesus is coming soon. The Word of God is permeating all these places. So the question everyone is asking is, um, 
we talk about daily in addition to you know you know jesus is coming soon some people say he's no longer coming like jesus is no longer coming and it's like no he is coming the word he is coming there's there's there are signs and wonders proving that he is coming so second peter 1 verse 10 says where wherefore the brethren give diligence to make your call and election sure make sure he do these things and you shall never fail let us be consistent with our walk with god be true to the God, to the work of God. Be true to the calling of God over your life. You know, make sure you're always holding on to the word of God daily. Forget, don't don't worry about people who mock the gospel, who don't care about the gospel. Don't worry about people who don't support the gospel. Don't worry about those people. Just keep your eyes focused. Like I will be focused. One ways you can help share the gospel, share this life to your friends and family that you look like. Say, hey, come here, come here. When you come here, you're gonna be changed. You're gonna receive prayers. You're gonna receive healing. You're gonna receive receive the word of God, the authentic word of God. We are, I am not afraid to preach the authentic word of God. I'm not afraid to preach repentance. I'm not afraid to preach responsibility because some people are afraid to tell you, you have to be responsible for your faith. Like is grace. We thank God for the grace of God, but the grace of God is going to be there. It's for you to experience the love and power of God, but you have to open the Bible with your two hands. You have to go down on your knees and pray. So like you can share That's another way to share the gospel, you know? So don't worry about when you're not getting support don't worry about that i don't care you know whatever the support system looks like i will keep sharing the gospel of jesus christ keep living for god because that's what jesus says in revelations 3 verse 10 he says you are faithful jesus sees your faithfulness and remember in Gen in revelations chapter 3 and some earlier verses jesus saw some people and says your strength is is what your strength was small and he still rewarded them jesus will reward you for every little thing you've done jesus will reward you guys for the likes the follows and watching and listening but mostly he will reward you for praying for reading the bible for forgiveness for sharing the gospel all these things yes the lord reward you mr tazan the lord reward you cheryl amanda and every other person out here tonight the lord reward you so i just want you to know that god sees you he hears you you know keep pressing in your faith john 16 verse 13 he says how be it when the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth see one thing that that jesus has gifted us my goodness the christian faith is so powerful listen one thing you have to know is life is spiritual Life as a human is spiritual. The one big evidence for those of, for a lot of people who deny the spirituality or don't care about it or think it's, we all dream. Dreams are spiritual. It's intense. It's, it's, a, it's an intense situation. Like people have nightmares. Some people have good dreams. If you press in with God and you spend quality time with God, you just want to have weird dreams. You have a, a communion with God. Your dreams will no longer be normal. I'm telling you, you know, once you once you start checking all the things you let into your soul, like once you start like, hey, I can't watch that song. I can't listen to that song. I can't watch that movie. I can't go to that concert. I, you know, you're very careful what you put into your, your soul because those songs, those movies, those shows, those games are just not normal. They're feeding your soul. They're feeding your mind and it affects your dreams. But once you go to conferences, you listen to Christian programs, you take time to meet with God, your dreams, oh my gosh, God will have a, God will have an express flow in your dreams. Brian Beck is here. I don't know if he's going to stay along. He's one of my youth boys. Good to see you. Um, God is going to have an express flow in your dreams. There'll be healing. There'll be breakthrough. You're no longer be having demonic dreams and wet dreams and foul spirits and sleep paralysis. And sometimes people have sex in your dreams and all of that. No. No, no, no. It's a time with God. It's a communion with God. Hi, Brian. I hope you had a great time at camp. I saw the videos. You see, he's one of the nice Christian guys. So we went on a cramp retreat. I went to Texas. He went somewhere up north to have a good time with God. So everybody's going somewhere. Have a retreat with God. He will heal you. He has a great testimony. I was really, I mean, really blessed by his testimony since seventh grade. I've known him and he's just keeps changing and being a better man. I'm proud of him. So, um, like I said, um, it says, John 16, verse 13, it says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. The spirit of God will just guide you into all truth. He will lead you. He will protect you. He would be with you. You see, a, 
when we are attacked spiritually as Christians, it means something, we're doing something wrong. It means something is off and we can fix it. It's not a hopeless situation. Know this, when spiritual things are happening and like, you know, for instance, uh, there's, there's some people that always bad luck. You remember something like bad luck is always happening to them. They never have something good or they've always been arrested by the police. Everywhere they go, the police will always stop them and, you know, and all of that. Or they always get into car accidents or bad dreams and all of that. You see, those are spiritual things you can take care of. And how do you take care of it? In prayer. And what did, what, what did the scripture we just read? Psalm chapter 42 verse 8 says, Psalm 42 says, I pray to the God who gives me life. You know, once you spend more time with God, he will give you more life and life abundantly. And John 16 verse 13. See, when I tell you that Jesus, the power of Jesus, he gives us access. Jesus gives us what? He gives us access. He gives us this Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God in us. And that's what scripture is saying in John, 4, John 16 verse 13. It says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. So when you have the Holy Spirit in you, he will guide you into all truth. He will lead you into what the truth is. He will show you that what you're doing is wrong. He will show you the devil is the one lying to you. You're better than what you think you are. He will show you like, he will show you your love. He will show you peace. He will, he will, the more you spend more time with the Holy Spirit, communion, koinonia, once you make time with him, there will be a change in you. That's why, you know, I look at some Christians and I can tell who's real and who's not. I can tell who's spending more time with God and who's not. You know, I can tell. You, you you know, you can tell when somebody goes to the gym. You know, you can tell somebody, that, you know, if you have that friend, you know, that family friend or that close friend that's making a little bit more money, you know, a little bit more, 10,000, more 20,000 there. You can tell, you can say, oh, you're making some money. You know, you can tell somebody that's, you know, that's working out. You can say, oh, you're working out. You can tell. You can see it, there's something about them. There's something about people who worship. You can tell. There's something about people who are hungry about God. You can you can feel it. You can know. So that when we spend more time with God, we will experience truth. You know, it says, For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall he, but whatsoever you shall hear, he shall hear, sorry, the Holy Spirit, whatever he hears, shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit will show us things to come. There was this young lady I met. I know her from Instagram. I know her from Instagram. And the Holy Spirit told me, you will see this lady. You will see this lady. Because she's a woman of God. Um, she has She's married. She has a kid. And, you know, she's a woman of God. And I just followed her intensely. And she also, like, followed me back. But like, you know, she paid attention to my account a little bit. I mean, she knew of my presence. Let me put it that way. But I followed her and I was just following her growth and all of that. And she's also Nigerian too, living in the U.S. So the Holy Spirit told me, you would see this woman here. You know, I just kept looking out for her and went looking out for her. And I saw her and I screamed and I said, hey, I knew you were coming here. I knew you were coming. She says, how did you know? I just said, I knew. And I was going to text her and tell her that God gave me a vision about it. The Lord would tell you about things to come. You know, he would tell you about things to come and what would happen. Um, I'm going to share one last testimony and I'm going to pray. One time we were um, taking a couch. Uh, I, I was staying. Remember I told you when I had the bed bugs and I prayed that God should drive the bed bugs away. So the bed bug situation started when I was renting a room somewhere. Um, and I got kicked out. They thought I brought the bed bugs in, but no, I just met, went in there, stayed there for about two months, and they had bed bugs there. So um, I got kicked out. I got my own place. I had bed bugs there again, and I prayed, and the Holy Spirit took control. I was angry in my spirit. After listening to sermons by Benson Ida Hosa, look him up, Benson Ida Hosa, I D A H O S A, Benson. So I listened to his sermons. I screamed at my bed, you know, and all I screamed with holy anger. I prayed in that situation and it was gone. So what am I saying here? I was living in this beautiful two-bedroom apartment, beautiful place, awesome, awesome place. Um, the neighbors downstairs, I barely had money to pay for the place, but the Holy Spirit just helped me pay for the place. You know, I was I kept paying for it, but it was expensive for the first two years, but God was with me. So I didn't have enough money to furnish the apartment. So the neighbors downstairs were going to give me a couch. So he was going to give me a couch, and he said, um, I'm moving out. You can have my couch. 
actually two couches. He says you can have them, but we only took I only took one. So I had this dream that we were taking a couch through the balcony in the backyard, through the balcony to my. I mean, he was taking it, trying to push it from downstairs to my balcony upstairs, so I could take the pull the um, uh, so I could pull the couch into my living room. I had this dream that as we were lifting a couch, I didn't know what it was. I don't know when, who, the, I didn't see anybody, but I knew that we were trying to lift a couch and some, and the couch slipped from my hands and crushed somebody and it killed the person. So when he suggested that we lift the couch through the backyard, I screamed and I said, no, no, I had a dream that somebody died. I had a dream that somebody died. Why am I sharing this testimony? In John chapter 16, verse 13, it says, the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. You know, he will show you things to come. So I, I just I just want to encourage you as a Christian. If you can't live the next 10, 20 years of your life not knowing the move of God. You can't live the next five years of your life, the next month of your life, and not be like, and not know something that's going to happen in the future. Like the Holy Spirit will tell you. You know, they, the world has corrupted this spiritual realm and tell you, you know, tarot card reading, you know, you're reading card, fortune cookies, and was palm reading. No, no, no. It says, Jesus gave us access. And he says, to guard your life, to make it better. He says, I will show you things to come. You know, John 16 verse 13. So why, why how does this tie into your walk with God, because we are, we started with Revelation 3 verse 10. Revelation 3 verse 10 talks about, for those of us who stand firmly and wait on God, Jesus says, I will save you. I will save you from the temptations of the world. You need to wait on God. You need to experience the Holy Spirit. You need to just be present. You need to soak in. You need to be present. And He will guide you. He will lead you. The Spirit of God within you is more than just making you, you know, making you feel interesting. It's to help you stand for the truth. It's to help you experience joy and peace and hope. It's to help you show you that your future, it is well. It is blessed. That's why we as Christians, you know, once as we walk closely with God, we can have a lot of tragedy. Sometimes, hey Zuli, thank you for joining. That's one of an, another awesome supporter. Thank you for supporting this program, this account, the best way you can. So the Holy Spirit um is supposed to give you joy and peace and hope. But once you have the Holy Spirit in you, you know, terrible things can happen. You may not even know where you're going to get the next paycheck. Your heart might be broken. Someone can break your heart. Your job can fire you. Anything bad can happen. But you see, because you have the Holy Spirit, you just have this peace in you. Because, you know, your future is taken care of. You can be in a hospital bed and you're broken. Hey, Alyssa, thank you for the likes. And you don't know what's going to happen. I was sick a couple of times and I was like, man, I don't know. But I just trust God. My family members were sick. I, I just trust God. My wife, I remember when we were having our baby. And I was a little worried. There was a whole lot of stuff that happened that night. I won't lie to you. But you see, when you have this peace of God in you, it affects how you think about life. It helps you. The Holy Spirit in you affects how you stand firm. So I will just pray us out. I will pray that God... Give us the strength to make time so we can experience the Holy Spirit in such a powerful way. It says, There is nothing what more that could ever come close. Nothing can come near. You are living hope. You Presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your 
presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Lord, we just come before you tonight. Rabaka shake it here. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that we experience you in such a powerful way, O oh God. And we experience the Holy Spirit in the depths of our heart, in our soul, in our mind. That He will give us strength to stand firmly, O oh Lord. Stand firmly to the end, O oh Lord. To leave His Christ, to die His gain. And we pray, O oh God, that we as your children. Oh, Rabaka Now we as your children experience in this fresh fire. This fresh outpour of the Holy Spirit in us in Jesus' name. Now that we experience fresh Holy Spirit in our lives, in our homes, O oh Lord. In our children, in our family, in our husbands, in our wives, in our jobs, in our prayer time, O oh Lord, that we want to commune with you, O oh God. That we want to commune with you. We want to dwell in your presence. There's nothing more. Your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing more than your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yes, Lord. Father, Lord, help us to dwell in your presence. All the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Awalamo Efanaya Jesus Iwalamo. Awalamo Efanaya Jesus Iwalamo. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love with Jesus. I'm in love. We're in love. We're in love with Jesus. Amen. Those of you who have been giving your life to Christ, just give your life to Christ. Confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It starts with that. It starts with seeking Him and saying, Lord Jesus, come in my heart. There's nothing more powerful than the name of Jesus. You know, it would be so good if you could just get to a place in your life where you can say this. You can say, Jesus, Jesus, my lover. I wanna make you smile. I wanna bless your heart. Jesu means Jesus in my language. So we say, Jesus, Jesus, my lover. I wanna make you smile. I wanna bless your heart. You know, just fall in love with Jesus. And you know that you have access to such a powerful, divine power. You see, when God was with his children of Israel, it was God for us God was for the children of Israel by pillar by by pillar by uh, cloud by day and pillar of fire by night he took them out of Egypt he saved his children but when Jesus came it was Emmanuel according to Isaiah with Emmanuel he says that's God with us he's around us he's with us but Jesus gave us a better gift. It says John in John, uh, what was the scripture we just read? John 16 verse 13 says, How be when the spirit of truth is come. So when Jesus came and he gave us the Holy Spirit, he says, God in us. So we just don't have a, we don't, the church is a beautiful place for us to get stronger. You know, iron sharpens iron. It's a place for us to serve. But the thing the church is not is like that's not the only place we experience Jesus. We experience Jesus in our homes. You can experience Jesus in your car. You can turn on. You can take some headphones and just put it in. That's why I tell people. You know, people. You know, um, it's American culture, especially in places like in Texas. You know, they will say, you know, stay strapped, have a gun on you. You know, for protection. You know, have a gun and all of that. But one thing I always encourage us as Christians. I, I don't think I've said it here is. Have worship playlist on you. Have sermons you just go to. And I always have headphones or have a invest in a speaker you can put in your car. If you don't have a car that can play music. If you have a car that plays music or you can fix it, please do it. 
don't take those car rides for granted. If you ride the bus, get some really good headphones. And stay strapped. Always have that worship playlist you just play that just sets you in the presence of God. Ooh. And that's why we have God in us, the Holy Spirit. Ooh. You just have this fresh flow of the Holy Spirit in us. And you can move mountains. You can, oh, you can deliver. You can cross breakthrough in your family. In your city, you can change the atmosphere in your family. You can change the atmosphere in your life. You can say enough and move into the next level because you can do everything through Christ that strengthens you. You can pray. Look, man, I have suffered in situations that were so hard. I had a job that was so hard, so hard, so hard. I had to work 60 to 80 hours because I had the Holy Spirit in me and I prayed. Things changed from working 60 to 80 hours every 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 week. I began to enjoy things like having vacation every month, being off five days every month. Because when the Holy Spirit is there, the possibilities are crazy. When the Holy Spirit is around, the possibilities are insane. It doesn't make sense. When the Holy Spirit is there, you can buy a house in three months. That's what happened to me and my family. All right. I can go on about the Holy Spirit. That's what we have. Jesus, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When we have Jesus, we have access. You see, you cannot go in the water. One thing I like about God and this realm we live in is he gives us a direct replica, like a direct, um, it mirrors each other. He gives us a direct replica of what the spiritual realm is. It doesn't matter how strong, how much money you have, how powerful you have. I mean, you are, how spiritual you are, you cannot say, I will go in that water and I will walk on that water everywhere I want to go to. You need a boat to get on that water. You need a boat, you need a sheep, you need a ship, or I don't know how you pronounce it in America. You need a ship, or you need a boat, uh, something to get on that water. Without it, you're going to sink, you're going to be cold, you're not going to be uncomfortable. You see, that's the same thing with the spiritual realm. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no way to the Father except through Jesus. There is no way. There is no way. There's no People can try different kinds of means to get to the spiritual realm. People can do Hinduism, Islam, witchcraft. You can do all kinds of things to get to the spiritual realm. But you see, the problem with those things is it destroys the person at the end. The people who practice those things are destroyed, are hopeless, they are sad, they don't have no hope for the future. But he says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Anyone who wants to come to the Father must come through me. So, when Jesus said that, we have access to the Holy Spirit. So remember, God for us, Old Testament, Jesus, New Testament, as he was coming, he was, he was prophesied in Isaiah, Emmanuel, God with us. And he gave us the Holy Spirit, says God in us. When you sleep, Jesus, when you eat, Jesus, when you, when you, when you go to bed, Jesus, when you go to work, Jesus. That's why when Jesus said in Matthew 28, he says, I will be with you to the end of the age because it's God in us. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's pray. Let's call it a night. All right, guys. I want to respect our time here. Father Lord, we just say a big thank you. Thank you for the amazing people who joined tonight. Thank you for healing. I know you're healing bones. You're healing blood vessels. You're healing Sadie Ray. You're healing um, charity. You're healing autism. You're healing uh, financial problems. You're healing sicknesses, diarrhea. You're healing... I don't know what people are going through. Some people are struggling with a relationship with you. Healing that too as well. Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you for healing, oh Lord. Above it all, Lord, tonight, I just pray and I speak life over every single person in this life. It is well with you in Jesus' name. I will download this live and I'll put it on my YouTube page. Please go check it out later if you need to watch it again. It's powerful. And if you want to share it with your friend, you can. So I just want to pray for us. Let's pray for Let's first pray. Oh. First of all, for those of you who haven't given your life to Christ, you can say this. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. 
Come and be my Lord and my personal Savior. Help me, Lord Jesus, to love you, to love my neighbor as myself. Lord Jesus, help me to serve you all the days of my life, to see you as what is important, to see you as what is vital. Help me make time for you, Lord Jesus. Help me, oh Lord, to wake up early or to go to bed late, just staying up at night or staying up, waking up early in the morning, just reading the word. Help me, Lord Jesus, to pray. Help me, Lord Jesus, to worship. And Lord, Lord Jesus, I'm, I declare I'm delivered from sin, hell, and the grave. I'm delivered from demonic evil confidence. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for you if you're giving your life to Christ, that the Lord heal you, He restore you, He makes you whole. And you're healed in Jesus' name. Scripture says, by the confession of the mouth, salvation is made. Confession of the heart. So we just pray that as you have confessed that you're a child of God and you experience the full power of God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for America. Thank you for our beautiful country. Thank you for keeping our country safe. Thank you for not tearing apart. And we just use the opportunity to pray for young young Americans tonight, especially young Americans on all the nations of the earth, the young people everywhere, that they, they love you, they're passionate about you. And Lord, we just send your angels protecting them, oh Lord, from the evil one. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. No more sexual exploitation. Young ones will not be raped, kidnapped, abused in Jesus' name. We cover them. But we also pray for American schools right now. The gospel is banned. We pray the gospel is allowed in schools. There are Bible clubs. The Bible is allowed. Teachers, coaches, and students can pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we just want to pray for young ones as well. There's a mental health crisis going on. A lot of families are having, you know, suffering from autistic children. We break the stronghold of autistic children in Jesus' name. Autism is reversed. They do not have it anymore. I curse that spirit of autism in Jesus' name. I speak life over your children. No more autism, no more ADHD, no more mental illness in Jesus' name. You're the Lord who does the impossible. It is done in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just want to pray for women. A lot, there's been a surge of breast cancer. We pray for healing over women. The, because women, not your children, women give birth to life. The devil has been attacking them. Is it they can have children and when they have it, they can breastfeed? There are a lot of women who are struggling with breastfeeding their children. And there are a lot of women struggling in their private area too as well. So Lord, we just speak life over our women. We speak life, the healing power of God over our women, oh Lord. That's healing in Jesus' name. Whatever sin they have committed, we speak that the blood of Jesus gives them the heart. The blood of Jesus will wash away, washes away their sin. And Lord, give them a heart of repentance. Let the women be humble and repent. And we pray for the men too as well. Young men are the, most, are the ones mostly attacked with autism. We destroy in Jesus' name. And whatever is attacking our men, that's not making us faithful to our family, to God and to our family. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. And every prostrate cancer is destroyed. Whatever demonic disease affecting our men and women and children rebuke it in america and all the nations of the earth in jesus name lord we pray for farmers keep our farmers safe keep them profitable um no more flu disease nothing was wrong with our chickens we speak life we rebuke the demonic stronghold of diseases and failure and poverty over our farmers in jesus name. they are profitable and you're blessed in jesus name we pray for persecuted christians that the fire of god will keep burning and they'll keep believing for it. They'll keep being bold in the face of death and preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray that the gospel of Jesus is accepted in all the nations of the earth. And we pray, O oh God, all Christians are filled with fire, with love and joy and peace, serving our Lord more than ever before. We pray for our Christian nation is blessed in Jesus' name. In America and all the nations of the earth, that Christianity keeps getting better. And Lord, we pray for development in America, in the nations of the earth, in Africa, in Asia, Lord, that people can afford food, safety, health, 
and protection in Jesus' name. And they're serving you, and they're building churches, and they're building hospitals, and schools, and homes, and cars, and all these things that they need to survive in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray that you judge every spiritual wickedness going on. People being attacked in their dreams, sleep paralysis, evil, oh Lord. We rebuke every spirit of evil. We just speak life over our churches. In Jesus' name, it is well that you judge every spiritual wickedness in our homes, in our families, whatever this evil is, it's enough is enough. It's gone in Jesus' name. Thank you for healing, Sadie Ray. Thank you for healing in charity. Thank you for the street ministry that you've blessed me with, that we keep going to the streets. Thank you for bringing more people here tonight. And Lord, lastly, you told us we should pray for you to send more that god will send more laborers into the vineyard lord send more laborers quicken the hearts of men to preach the gospel more and more and they'll be good people in jesus name thank you lord for answer prayers thank you for your goodness and your mercy thank you for blessing america and all the nations of the earth thank you for this beautiful service and we pray we see each other on the 20th tomorrow night in jesus name i pray amen you guys have a wonderful night thank you for the support i appreciate it god bless you Thank you.